Amen. Today we're talking about yours, for yours is the kingdom, the glory, or the power, and the glory. Amen. Last week, we learned specifically about the mystery of the name of Christ. Amen. I said we learned what? The mystery of the name of Christ. And the Bible says that the name of Christ is a package. So when we go to Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6, he said his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor. But when he was born, the angel came and mentioned the name what? Jesus. That should be given to him. And he himself said that we should cast out demons in his name. And the Bible also declares, upon the mentioned name of Jesus, every knee shall what? Shall bow. And he told that the things in heaven, on earth, and under the earth will be submitted to the power of the name of Christ, which symbolizes Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6, wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting God. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Today, by the grace of God, we're going to learn, for yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. And you can see the sequence wherein that it was structured. And I wanted to understand this mystery of yours is the power. Before he said that, he said, lead us not into what? Temptation. Deliver us from evil. For yours is what? The kingdom. So it means that in the kingdom, the enemy is trying to cause you to what? To evil. To lead you to evil. And you are calling God to de deliver you from that evil. How can that be possible? It can be possible when you and I, we recognize that the kingdom belongs to him. The power belongs to him. And the glory belongs to him. Let me break it down because of time a little bit. God came in Daniel chapter 2 verse 44. He gave the revelation to Daniel that God will set up a kingdom. There have been two kingdoms that have been set up by God. The one that he led the Israelites through Abraham lineage to form a nation called the Israelites. And when he formed them, he told them in Exodus chapter 19 verse 6, there shall be what? Kingdom of what? Priests unto him. We likewise have been formed to depict the kingdom of what? Priests and kingship unto our God. So these are the two kingdoms, and when you look at these two kingdoms, God always leads. So when you read the Daniel chapter 2 verse 44, he said that kingdom will not be left to other people. When you form the nation Israel, he led them until the Israelites rejected him in the time of Samuel. And you all know the story, what happened to the Israelites after they choose King Saul as their king instead of allowing God to be their king, the consequences and the things that happened to them, the anger of the Lord that was invoked upon them, them going to slavery, them being overruled by their enemies, and God had caused them to understand that when you choose any king, before yours is the kingdom will come, you will go to temptation. The evil one will take over. Or oh, is somebody here with me? I repeat, Anytime you reject God as a king, the evil one will come in. He will take over your life. He will bring evil. He will lead you to temptation. Because your desire is supposed to be of God as your king. If you choose otherwise, you are choosing Satan reign over your life. Oh, hallelujah. There are two kingdoms. And these two kingdoms, one was established by God. One was established by Satan. And your choice is to choose God. Satan doesn't need you to choose him. Because immediately you reject God, you belong to him. Are you understanding? He doesn't, want, he doesn't need you to choose him. This is why when he went to the garden, he told Adam and Eve, he didn't tell them to come into his kingdom. What did he do? As God said, he causes them to reject the kingdom of God. And automatically, the power and the glory that they possess 
Where was it? This is what we were learning this morning at the Sunday school. Satan told Jesus Christ, the creator of the earth, of the heavens and the earth, that all this power, all this glory was delivered to me. Bow before me. You see the audacity? All because man rejected God's kingship. You might not see that in Genesis, but that is what actually they did. The tree of knowledge of good and evil means that you have rejected God's leadership. God control over your life. So you want to have your own way of knowledge. You have to have your own way of what? Understanding. And live your life the way you want. And when you do that, you are giving your right, your authority, your power, and you are giving your glory to Satan. And we all realize that when Adam did it, he saw that he was naked. And when you became naked, Satan will give you most advice. Wear the mini skirt, put the isolate on, insult that man, steal, kill, do all kinds of things that goes against the will of God. Oh, somebody here with me. Praise the Lord. That's why the Bible said, lead us not to temptation. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. God has established his kingdom. And the Bible says, he has given us what? Power. Why power? Because we are contending not against what? Flesh and blood. All along, Satan goal is to deviate you from the will of God. To lead you into temptation. To cause you to miss heaven. To go against the will of God. So that you will have that power and that glory that God created you. Listen and listen carefully. God created you in his image. And God has power, and God has what? Glory. So, immediately you reject the kingdom of God, which means you have rejected a king. A kingdom is two words. A king and his domain or control or his instructions. So, when you rejected the kingdom of God, you lose your power and you lose what? Your glory. And what comes? Satan will lead you to temptation. All kinds of things will you do? And you ask yourself, why do I do this? You did it because you rejected God. Oh, somebody here with me. Oh, somebody here with me. It, has an, it is an order. You need to be in the kingdom of God. And when you come into the kingdom of God, you get power. And even in the kingdom of God, many Christians are rejecting this power. I said they are doing what? They are rejecting this power of God. As a result, they are not able to contend with the enemy. Please understand that it's a spiritual warfare that we have been called into. You have not been called into to eat and drink. Bible said the kingdom of God is not what? Meat and drink. But the demonstration of what? The power of God. Please put that thing in your mind. The kingdom of God is not what? Meat and drink. It's not party. That's why the Bible says in the last days, men will be eating and drinking, giving themselves in marriage, giving their own marriage, and they will not see anything. Until the trumpet sound, and it will be too late. Because when you are in a kingdom, that is not what it's about. So if that is what you are doing, you will even know when the Lord is coming. Oh, somebody here with me. If you truly in tune with God and the spirit of God is within you, let me tell you, the day, the day and the hour that you will not know, by the coming of the Lord, you will know the time and the season that you are in. You will know. If somebody tells you you will not know, he's telling you a lie. You don't know the hour and the particular day. But you know the season that the Lord is coming. You will definitely know. So don't be deceived and cause the enemy to mislead you to live anyhow in the dispensation that we are in. Understand the warfare. 1 John 3 verse 8 tells us that Christ came to dismantle the west of the enemy. Have you ever asked yourself why is it that God gave 
the children of God power. And how do we receive this power? Today I want to go briefly because I'm not teaching entirely on that because I'm tackling the kingdom, the glory, and the power. So you need to understand and have clarity that when you are in that kingdom, there are two things that have to prevail in your life. The power and the glory. The power and what? And the growth. If you are a Christian, you don't have power, you are yet to be a Christian. You are not born again. Do not let any preacher man tell you that you are born again. You are not born again. Because born again Christians have what? Power. That's what makes you born again. You are not born again as, as you are sitting down or you are watching me. You are born again because of what? The power of God. Oh, hallelujah. Let's go to 1 John chapter 1. No, John chapter 1, not 1 John. John chapter 1. But before I read that, I know you know the scriptures. Colossians 1.13, that you have been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of what? His dear son. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12 declares that you are not what? Wrestling against flesh and blood. Against what? Powers. Against rulers of the darkness of this world. And against what? Spiritual wickedness. You need power. You can never be a Christian without power. That is not the intention of God. So when he chose the first kingdom, the Israelites, when he was leading them, was anybody able to defeat them? They have what? Power. The Israelites have what? Bible says when people even hear their name, they're free. They have what? Power. Anytime God is leading his people, you are not void of what? Power. It's impossible. God does not operate that way. When he was with Abraham, he, he told Abraham, after people, a nation, about four kings, have captured a certain group of people, God led Abraham and his household. Or is somebody here with me? To go and defeat four kings. Him and his slaves in his house. Why? Because Abraham was in the kingdom of God. God was with him. He has what? Power. We call the scripture. If God is with us, who can be against us? It's true. If God is with you indeed, then you have power and nobody can be against you. Or somebody here with me. We lack power. For yours is the kingdom, the power. But Christians know their pastors, know their church, but they don't know the one who the kingdom belongs to, who the power belongs to, who the glory belongs to. So how do we get this power? John chapter 1, verse 12. How do we get this power? John chapter 1, verse 2. But as many as receive him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. You see that he have told you a lie? He gave you a power to become what? A son of God. He did not just make you a son of God. He gave you. We read it every day, but somebody is not interpreting it right for us. He gave you what? Power to become a son of God. So you can't be a son of God without what? Power. It's a lie. It's not in the scriptures. And you, by, the time, by the end of this message, you understand that you need that power. Oh, somebody here with me. And how does the power come from? Even to them that believe in what? In his name. So you hear the name of Jesus Christ. That through him you can be saved. You are accepted. But the Bible is reading it in a reverse form. That he has, when you become a child of God, you will receive what? Power. But he's telling you the process to become that son and to receive that power. So how, what is the process? Which were not born of, which were not born of what? Of the blood. What is blood? You, when in order to conceive, Man and woman meet naturally. And through the process of the blood of God or whatever God will do, they conceive. So Bible says that 
Those who receive power is not through the natural means. Not because that you were born by your mother, by your father, by your whoever that you belong to, whether rich or poor, that you receive this power. Not of the will of the flesh, which I've already explained. Not of the will of man, but of what? Of God. In order to receive this power, you need to be born of what? God. This is why the reason why the first words that proceeded out of the mouth of Christ before he preached anything, he said, repent for the kingdom of God, what? It's a hand. And be what? Born again. Christ said you must be what? Born again. When you read John chapter 3, he gave the elaborate answer to this question. How can one be born again? Nicodemus asked, how can a grown up like me with big ears, coconut head, be born again? And he said, except you are born of what? Of the spirit and the water, you cannot what? Be born again or enter into the kingdom that I'm talking about. Remember, he said, for him is a kingdom. It belongs to him. So he is the only one who is giving you the criteria to enter that kingdom. It's not because that you accepted the name. There is a criteria. And the criteria, in order to receive that power, he's telling you, it's not by the birth of flesh, by the birth of man, by the birth of blood, but only by the birth of God. You cannot go around it. Do not let anybody deceive you on this subject. For the kingdom belongs to him. He is the only one that can open the door for you to do what? You have hear people testimony that when they die, they get to the gate. And once they get to the gate, they were told, go to the left. And others, the door was what? Was open for them. So God is the only one who can open that door for you. Nobody. And the criteria is that you must be born what? Again. And when you read John 15, verse 7, he said, if you abide me, you abide in me, and my words abide in you, then I will help you. You know, I wanted to read to you the book of Acts, chapter, the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 38. After the Holy Ghost came, Peter preached. And when Peter has preached the word of God, Bible says, those men who hear ask a question. And the question they asked, Peter gave them the answer. And this is the answer Peter gave to them because of time I don't want to read it all. Then Peter said to them, repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of what? Of your sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So if you, are, you claim to be born again and you have not received the gift of the Holy Spirit, I don't know which gospel you hear. It, it's a wrong gospel. You hear the third gospel, you do not hear the wheat gospel. Because the wheat gospel, to them that he gave what? Power to become the sons of God. Oh, somebody here with me. Why you was on this earth? Because that he hasn't died. When you read the book of John chapter 4 verse 39, I think so, or chapter 7, I forget rightly, he said that for this he spoke, when he spoke about those that will believe in him, out of their belly shall flow the rivers of what? Living waters. And the Bible explained that scripture. For this he spoke concerning the Holy Spirit that will be given. For at that time, Christ has not died yet. So after Christ has died, his own disciples, he told them this in the book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 5 and 8. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Verse 8, but you shall receive power when the Spirit has come upon you and you shall be a witness to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. So you see, you don't receive the power 
unless you are born again by the Spirit. Oh, somebody here with me. You cannot receive the power unless you are what? According to Jesus, when the Holy Spirit come upon you, you shall receive what? Power. So that power that he gave is after you have been born again, then the power comes. Oh, somebody here with me. You can't be born again. You know, there's another instance called, you know, in, in Acts chapter 10, a man called Cornelius. Oh, hallelujah. Cornelius, Bible says, his prayers were memorial before God. I say his prayers were what? Before who? Did he need anything? God recognized him. If it was hard, I would say God already recognized him. What do I need the Holy Spirit for? I don't need the Holy Spirit because my prayer is what? In the throne room of God. God recognized me. My arms, those of you who are doing arms, those of you who are giving benevolence, those of you who are giving your wealth to the poor, I understand. Cornelius was in the same class. He was doing it. But the Bible says that an angel of God was sent from heaven. And this, I believe, what the angel came and told Corny, your prayers are in heaven. God hears you. But if you don't get born again and receive the power of God, the kingdom of God, you, are not, you don't belong there. God sent an angel. At the same time, God was giving Peter what? A vision. And Peter said, I will not eat what is what? Unclean. And the Bible says, God said, what God has cleaned, let no man say that it's not what? Unclean. So what did God did? Peter went to Cornelius, preached to him, and what happened? He received the gospel, and he was baptized. Not before he even he baptized, he was, before he do the water baptism, the Holy Ghost baptism came upon him to fulfill what Christ had taught in John 3 verse 5. Except a man be born of the water and the spirit you cannot enter into the kingdom and without a kingdom you lack power and if you lack power you are not what? A son of God it's only those who have the power of God that are sons of God I mean we have tried to preach around it to make people comfortable. I'm not here to make you comfortable. I'm here to tell you the truths of God. You need the power of God. You need to be born again to be part of the kingdom of God. The kingdom and the power are intertwined. Oh, somebody here with me. I know that many of you will be against me. Let me give you another instance. Many of us, we ask, we want to ask, right? We, we, somebody have told us the day you accepted Christ, you receive the power. Right? It's a lie. I say it's what? Because, because of they are reading Acts chapter 2 verse 38 wrongly. Repent and be baptized. But they forget that there was an and you shall receive the gift of what? Of the Holy. How do you receive? Christ explained to Nicodemus that Except you are born of the water and the spirit. Many Christians, they are only in verse 3. In John chapter 3. Christ said, except a man be born again, he cannot what? See the kingdom. Please, I want you to look through your Bible. If you're on the internet, wherever you are, look through your Bible if what I'm telling you is a lie. Please look, he said verse 3, John 3, 3. Let me read it. Let me read it for you. John 3, 3. Today, I didn't want to read so many scriptures, but I want to read this to you. And Jesus answered and said to him, I mean John 3, 3, please open your Bible. For most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot what? See, when you are coming to this building, do you saw this building? But you were outside. It's an issue. Now, let's jump to verse 5. Let's jump after Nicodemus asked that question. Verse 5. Most assuredly, I say unto you, this is Jesus answered, unless one is what? Born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter. There is difference between seeing and entering. There are people who are walking past here. They are seeing this building that they are not hearing what you are hearing. They are not seeing what you are seeing. They are not experiencing the presence of God that you are experiencing. 
They are not receiving this word that you are hearing. Why? Because they only see the building. It's only those who have entered and sitting down here, they are receiving this word. Oh, that, do, do you understand me? So realm born again is to be born of what? Water and the spirit. If you believe that you, you believe in the name of Jesus Christ, that he is your savior, he is a everlasting God, he is the prince of peace, he is your counselor, then you got to take this word very seriously. Amen? Amen. I want to give you something the Lord taught me this morning. In Psalm 62 verse 11, I want you to know the timetable and the plans of God the season that you were in, and the power that God has given to us. That power was once spoken in the garden. And Sister Megan, today, he was quoting her. I said, wow, God, you are just, you are so faithful. Sister Megan was teaching Sunday school. He quoted it, even though he didn't explain it. But one way or the other, I didn't want to preach about that. Because I felt like it's good. But the Lord reminded me, I gave you a word, go ahead and speak it. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. He, let, let's, Psalm 62, verse 11. God has spoken once, twice I've heard this, that power belongs to God. Oh, somebody here. Once God has spoken. Why did once God spoke? Let's go to Genesis 1, 28. And God blessed them. Genesis chapter 1, verse number 28. God blessed them. And God said unto them, be fruitful. Multiply, replenish the earth and subdue it. Oh, hallelujah. Why is God telling them to subdue it? Because at that time, God knew the Satan would come. We wrestle not against what? So God spoke that word into existence that we will have that power to subdue them. But the Bible says twice that we have heard. Because twice God has established a kingdom and gave them a mandate. When you told the Israelites, I'm taking you to the, a land full of honey and milk, did they went and drink milk or did they went for warfare? They went for what? Warfare, destroying nations, uprooting nations, and establish the nation of the Lord. But God, in our time, has given us the same mandate. Oh, somebody here. Oh, somebody here. You see, some of you didn't believe that you are in a kingdom. When you go home, read Revelation 1 verse 6, that God has made you a kingdom with dominion. But I want to read Mark chapter 16 verse 15 and to 18. And he said unto them, go ye into all the world. The same, the same word that was paraphrased to Adam and Eve, God is giving us another mandate. Once I've heard, twice that we hear, that all power belongs to what? Because all power belongs to God, the Israelites, they defeated their enemies. Now, God is giving us the same mandate. Twice we have heard. When God again came in the flesh of man and began to pronounce that power to us, that power that those who become the sons of God he gave, this is what is it for? This is what it meant. This is what we're supposed to use it. Oh, hallelujah. Last week I told you that God has given you the ingredient for what? For the soup. And this is what the soup we're supposed to cook, to present. And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes and is baptized, please hear, he that is what? And he, doesn't, he didn't say he that believes and get the water baptism. The word baptized means it stands for the water baptism and the spiritual baptism. Oh, hallelujah. He that believes and is baptized shall be what? Saved. But he that believes not shall be damned. So if you have not received the, the Holy Spirit baptism, you have not believed to full. You have believed partially. You need to believe to full so that you can receive the Holy Ghost baptism. Because it's a gift of God to you. And these signs will follow them. Them that believe. Many people say, oh, this was for what? For the believers. For the apostles, right? The apostles were given a mandate specifically because they received the Holy Ghost, they received the power. So they were healing the sick. 
But this statement is for you and I who believe. Oh, I want you to read again. I want you to read again. And this sign, verse 17, which is Mark 16, verse 17, and this signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it will not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. We are represented the earth by bringing people from the control and manipulation and powers of darkness. We are subduing the powers of darkness that are operating and masquerading on this earth. It's you and I with that power God has given to us to operate in that capacity. Oh, hallelujah. Let's go to the book of Luke chapter 10 verse 19. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents, scorpions, and over all the power of what? The enemy. So the power given to us, not that we have the power, we even have what? The authority, one that God has spoken, twice that we have heard. God has already spoken in Genesis 1, that we should subdue the earth. We should represent the earth. He has spoken once, but twice. When he, he established the kingdom, he gave those people in that kingdom that authority to operate. Or oh, are you understanding that mystery? Once God has spoken, twice that you have what? Heard. He gave the Israelites that authority. And he's giving you and I, as a believers, the same authority to trample upon the powers of what? Of darkness. So that his name shall be good. And he went for and said, nothing shall by any means hurt you. When the power is there, nothing by any means will do what? He didn't say that they will not throw the arrow. He didn't say that they will not fight with you. But he said it will not what? Hurt you. Oh, somebody here with me. Be careful as a believer so that you can walk with God and experience. What is the glory? Romans chapter 3 verse 23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So before the kingdom and the power, you are a sinner. You are short of what? The glory of God. What is the glory of God? The glory of God is what he quoted in Genesis chapter 1 verse 28. We show forth the glory of God by subduing, overcoming the enemy, oppressing them, and casting them out of people's life. Oh, hallelujah. And if you're afraid of even the insect, how are you going to cast a demon? Some of you, Bible says, I give you authority to trample up your serpents. I bet you, if we give you, what did that, 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 that animal that look like a, a snake? What is it? No, he's in the mud. Worm. Some of you are even afraid of worm. He doesn't even have a teeth. He doesn't even have a head. And they're afraid of it. You see how bad it is? How are you going to trample up on serpents? You see spider in your room and you are scared to death. Come and see Manuela when you are child, you see a spider. She'll be running in the room as if he, the word is coming to an end. Are you understanding me? How are you going to trample up on serpents and scorpion? But this is the, because that you don't have the power, you are afraid. It's like when you don't have the power. Okay, let me show you something, what the meaning of the power is. Apothecally, maybe Sister Samuel is a billionaire, right? Uh, say big game, man. Receive it. Yeah. <laughs> you see that he doesn't have the billion. You couldn't say the amen. Amen. So if he's a billionaire, would she be afraid to buy a car of 150000 Why? Yeah. The same way. If you're afraid of the common serpents and this thing, then you don't have the power. You don't have the power. Three days ago, I was praying and said, God, I would like that you let Satan come to me and I will sit him down and talk to him. I told God, as I would sit Satan down and talk to the guy, I said, why are you doing all this? 
Because I'm not afraid of him. I know who I am. I'm not afraid of him. I'm not afraid of witches. I've told you my story again and again. Nobody was passing 40 in my family. No male was passing. No male. Until I passed, people begin to pass. I was talking to my friend, Dr. Nguyenzi. If I tell you some of the miracles the Lord have done in my life, it will shock you. Miracles upon miracles upon miracles. But I don't toot my horn on that. I'm concerned and pressing towards the goal. My desire is to do the will of God, not about what he has done. It's past. Forgetting about the things in the past. Let us press towards what? The goal. And the goal is that you will be glorified at the end of the day. Let me tell you, the body that you think that you have a great life, you have a big, nice waist, you are gorgeous, people are saying that you are beautiful, you are ugly. Compared to the glory that can be revealed. Oh, somebody here. You are not that beautiful. Let one angel appear here and see the glory of God. It will amaze you. When you see an angel, it will what? The beauty, their clothes, their presence. And you are talking about this flesh and blood. That signs and wonders will take place in a few years. That you have, your eyes will be, will, be, will be changing. It's called signs and wonders. It will take place very soon in your life. You think that you are a young lady? You are, you, you are standing on your seat. Every part of your body looks fresh. You start giving birth. See your stomach and see your breast. See, see your body the way it will trace with signs and wonders. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. If I'm lying, go and take a look at your picture 15 years ago and look at yourself now. Go and look at yourself now. You wake up and if they, 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 this morning, let me tell you guys a story. I was trying to change this light. By the time I rise, somebody have lifted me all the way up and crashed me on the ground. I wake, I lie down for about 10 minutes before I was able to get up. Are you understanding me? We grow old. We are not beautiful as we think that we are. That is the thing that I wanted to stretch in your mind. But there is a glory. God wants to glorify you. That's why before you came to Christ, Bible said, for all have what? Sin and come short of the glory of God. Christianity, the ultimate is glorification. After you enter the kingdom, you get the power to do the will of God. And at the end of the day, God will do what? Will glorify you. Colossians chapter 1 verse 27. To whom God will make known what is the riches of the glory of the mystery among the Gentiles which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. So if you have, accept, you have accepted Christ, the, the word hope is used for future. We hope, I hope that I'm a billionaire. I hope that I will buy Mercedes-Benz. I hope that I can give you this money. So you are talking about future terms. Oh, hallelujah. Bible says Christ in you is the hope of what? Glory. It's about glory. That you have with God. Before man sin. That's why John 3, 23 say, For all have sinned and come short of what? The glory. Don't, don't get physique on this earthly body. It will decay. Go to cemetery. Do you know how many people have come before you? There are remains in the cemetery. Nobody live forever. But those who have accepted Christ. He's guaranteeing you that glory of everlasting life. He's guaranteeing you that you will be transformed and possessed. He told the disciples and he told the Pharisees that in the resurrection, you will be like what? An angel. Oh, somebody here with me. He said you will be like what? You will have that glory. You will have that power. You can stay in the presence of God. You will live forever. This body does not live forever. The glory of the Lord is what you have to pursue. Do everything in your life. Do not let the glory of God. That's why he said, for yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. It belongs to the Lord. 
And he's willing to give those who enter the kingdom. The same way he's willing to give you power to become the son of God. The glory will follow if you allow yourself to become a son of God. Oh, somebody here with me. Oh, somebody here with me. I'm ending by quoting Romans chapter 2 verse 7. Before I end that, let me read Colossians 1 verse 4. What will keep you into this glory? Take, it's called take away food. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is what? Sitting at the right hand of God. Everything here will be destroyed. The only thing that will be forever is where Christ is. Amen? Set your mind on things above, not on things on earth. For you die and your life is hidden with Christ in God. So let me break it down a little bit for you. Bible says your life is hidden in what? In Christ and in God. Do you understand? So let us say this is, this is God. God has absorbed Christ. And Christ has absorbed you. So you have become a God-like. You are in God. You are not anywhere. You are where? In God. Your life is hidden in Christ and in God. You are in God. So when you are in God, the only thing that will take you away from God is when you set your, your eyes on the things of this earth. So the Bible is admonishing you to set your Christ, to set your, uh, your, your eyes on the things on, in heaven. For you die and your life is hidden. So the baptism is, means death. The water baptism, it means what? Death. It's not because you God wants to forgive. Bible say, if that be, Bible say, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, your sins will be forgiven. We, that is how God forgive our sins. It's not true baptism. Don't let anybody tell you because that you have been baptized in the water, your sins have been forgiven. It's a lie. Go ahead and read the book of Romans chapter 6. Go ahead and read the book of Colossians chapter 2. It will tell you that. But the bottom line is the Bible says your life is hidden in Christ. And Christ is in God. God and Christ are not separate beings. They are not two God. We have only one God. So if your life is hidden in Christ, you are in what? In Christ. And Bible says, when Christ, who is your life? Like Galatians chapter 2 verse 20 says that the life that I live is not I, but Christ do what? Live his life in me. Bible said, when Christ, who is your life? If you are truly born again and you are hidden in Christ, Christ is your life. Christ's command is your command. You are not pursuing earthly agenda. You are mandated. Once God has spoken, twice that we are here, that all power, that power has been given to you and I. That we are casting out demons, setting the captive free, breaking the yoke, destroying the works of the enemy. When Christ appears, then you also will appear with him in what? In glory. Then you can what? Appear with him in what? In glory. Your life is in Christ. And once he appear, you also will do what? That's why the Bible says on the same seal, when Christ appear, we will be transformed and be like him. He's coming with angels, right? And Bible says that you will be transformed and changed to become like them. We will be as he is. He possesses the glory body, the glorified body. And that is what you need to set your agenda, your goal, everything to be like that. Now let me read uh, Romans chapter 2 verse 7 to you. To them who by patience, continuance, in well doing, seek for glory. Are you seeking for that glory? And honor and immortality, eternal life. When you go read the whole chapter, I just took this out to read to you. If you want God to be your God, you want to be blessed, you have to seek these things by patience. People will laugh at you. 
that as a lady, we are in a modern way. Why are you putting a scarf in your head? Why are you wearing a long dress? Why can't you make a makeup and look like a toy? Oh, are you understanding me? You are in the world. Why is it that you, you let your husband say, have total control over you? Why do you have the final say in your life? Because God says so. Your life is hidden in Christ. Do not allow them to mislead you. If you are seeking for this glory, you want to be transformed to become like an angel. You want to possess the body of Christ who has saved you. Then submit yourself to Christ. Submit yourself to his teachings. If you live in me, and my words live in you, whatsoever you ask. And like I said, the Bible says in Luke chapter 11, if you ask, it shall be given. If you seek, you will do what? If you knock, it shall be open. And he went further and said that you been evil. Know how to give good things to your children. How many of us will ask your father in heaven about the Holy Spirit that you will not give to them? Take this home. Go on your knees. Fast and seek the face of God. If you like the power of God and ask God, God, baptize me and you will receive the power to become the son of God. God richly bless you. Amen. Amen.